The Street Portrait Playbook by Daniel Arnold. These are the lessons taught at Street Photography University at our photo walks in Dallas, Texas. What is a street portrait? A street portrait is an image of a person who is aware they are being photographed and who is engaged in the process. The photographer uses natural light and possibly a flash. The setting is urban and in public. Street portraits are different from street photography, which is a journalistic style, candid snapshot of a person in public who is possibly unaware their image is being documented. In this close-up, the man consented to having his picture taken and is expressing a warm emotion to the camera. In this overhead shot, the homeless man is unaware that he is being photographed. Since his face isn't shown, the image is a comment on inner city poverty and not a portrait of an individual. Street portraits are often called environmental portraits. However, this term is best used when photographing a person in a setting that conveys information about their personality or life circumstances, such as home or workplace. In the photo of the boy, he wanted to emulate the mural of the president. The photo of the potter shows him at work in his studio. The photo of the conductor is candid, and though he is aware I was taking his picture, he did not pose for me or change his behavior for the camera. Street portrait, environmental portrait, candid street photography. Section 1. Light. 1. Position the model for light in the eyes. Have the model move while you watch the shadows move on her face. When you like the shadow pattern, have her stop. You have now placed her based on the direction of the light. Begin by placing the model based on the direction of the light. Do this before you fall in love with the background. A natural light portrait is not about executing a preconceived image. It is about looking at the actual conditions and using a set of tools to solve problems creatively. While you can certainly use reflectors or a flash to add light, you still must position the model based on the actual light conditions. Position the model for light in the eyes. Why use front lighting? High key lighting is cheerful. It fills in the texture of rough skin and can hide blemishes. Because there are no shadows, the face looks flatter. This can make large noses and chins look better. Women and children are often photographed this way. Why use Rembrandt lighting? Light usually comes from one direction, and usually from above. One light, one shadow. At three-quarter position. Too many lights from too many directions cast shadows in different directions from the nose and look unnatural. Light enters both irises to show the color. The triangle of light on the shadow side cheek is a classic shadow pattern. You can achieve it by how you position the model in the light. Shadows give the face shape and the overall image depth. Having one side of the face in shadows helps to hide asymmetry in the features. Working with shadows is far better than rebuilding someone's face in Photoshop. Since you are probably already working with one source of directional light, why not create this master style of portrait? Activity. Look at the direction of the natural light and move the subject around until the light is angled into at least one eye. Only now look at the background. Raccoon shadows from harsh overhead sunlight should be avoided. Knowing how light changes throughout the day will help you to schedule the best time for a session. If you shoot when the sun is directly overhead, then you will probably have to limit your locations to the shady side of buildings. Limits can be great for creativity, or they can be frustrating. When I absolutely have to shoot at midday, I meet the model near a large bridge, so I know there will be some shade. In the studio, you decide where you put your lights. In the streets, you decide where you put your model. Working in natural light requires that you master the exposure triangle. Every few minutes, you'll be compensating by adjusting your settings. Be sure you're able to do this before wasting a model's time. Light structures the face. The eye is protected by the great structures of skull bone, known as the brow ridge. The human eye is more deeply set within the skull than we realize. The surrounding structures of brow and cheekbone are prominent and cast deep shadows. Light comes from above, but it can be direct or diffused depending on the day. Human anatomy is designed to protect the eye. That is why the direction of the light causes shadows. 2. Mastering Dynamic Light Highlights, midtones, and shadows are the three elements that work together to give depth to the face. Typically, the highlight is on the hair. This bright area separates the subject from the background. 
extra points if you place the highlight against a dark background and achieve contrast, which will draw the viewer's eye into the composition. The midtones are where the information is. Emotions conveyed in microexpressions are of extreme interest to other humans. Pores, blemishes, and wrinkles all speak to the health and beauty. Be sure the midtones are properly exposed so these details are conveyed to the viewer. Too bright or too dark, and the viewer loses the information. On the other hand, if a person does not have beautiful skin, you can cover imperfections with shadows. Shadows give shape and depth. We work in a two-dimensional medium, trying to represent a three-dimensional world. The ability to control shadows is where the real mastery of photography lies. The amount of shadows can be regulated by the intention of the portrait. If the client wants to look bright, happy, and trustworthy, then you want a high-key image with lots of information in the midtones and little or nothing concealed in the shadows. If you want a more dramatic, edgy portrait, then a low-key image with large areas of black shadows will draw the viewer in and create tension. Getting all three tones is hard to do with natural light. Sometimes you get lucky and the conditions are just right. However, you will never get lucky in positioning the model if you are not aware to look for dynamic light. Like all advanced skills, it is important to know this high standard exists and to aspire to it. Note: Backlighting will almost always require extra gear. You can either place the model so her back is lit by the setting sun at an acute angle and fill in her face with a reflector or flash, or by placing the reflector or flash behind her to artificially create the backlight. Whether you want to do this is up to you. Know that it will slow you down by half the speed of an all natural light session. Above all, know the reason to artificially backlight is to create separation from the background. Chiaro scuro. The Italian word meaning light dark is an important concept in the fine art world of drawing, painting, and sculpture. As you become more aware of how values and tones gradually fall off to show contour, you will also need to become aware of how bright highlights juxtapose against dark backgrounds lead to contrast. I often will have a model step through a harsh beam of light until they are in highlights and there is a shadow behind them. This contrast of light dark will guide the viewer's eye to the focal point I want them to care about, the subject's expressive face. Light bounces around between buildings and can create interesting pools of light. One benefit is the unique patterns. Another benefit is the contrast of a spotlight bouncing into an area of shadows. This light is reflecting off a window across the street. 3. Social Cues Reading Microexpressions Beyond the initial judgments about health and beauty, the deeper reason a well-lit face is crucial to your portrait is the human interest in emotions. Think of it as a Venn diagram. Technical skills with a camera and psychology add up to a portrait. Light reveals valuable information in the eyes. Knowing human psychology will help you to understand the subject-viewer relationship. People read information about one another by noticing microexpressions in the eye. This is why having light in the eye is important. We need the information presented in the eye to make interpersonal value judgments about emotion, personality, intelligence, response time, health, and trustworthiness. Light in the eye is important for reading emotions. The goal of a portrait is to represent the dignity of the person. Thank you for watching part one of the Street Portrait Playbook. As you've learned, you don't need expensive studios or equipment to take great portraits. If you would like a physical copy of this information, the print version is available on Amazon.